yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. This time it's Singapore, where I'm to find a girl. The only thing I know about her is that she's called the Red Queen and has a line on where I can lay my hands on a million dollars worth of rubber stolen from Uncle Sam. It's a hurry-up order, so I decide to get with it right away. I'm calling the hotel to have them pick up my stuff at the airport when a welcoming committee appears from out of nowhere and slips me the keys to the city. That's what I like about traveling undercover. Nobody ever knows when you arrive, except in my case, six bullets labeled Steve. Anyhow, the heat's on, so the sooner I get where I'm going, the better. I'm to make contact with my unknown lady down in the heart of the native quarter. It's a mangy little bistro full of foul odors and weird characters and has the well-thought-out title of Mamie Wong's Place. Yeah, Mamie Wong. Stevie. Stevie. Hiya, Mamie. <laughs> good to see you. It's sure good to see you again. But I knew you'd be around here before long. The minute I heard you were in town. The minute you heard? You mean you knew I was in Singapore? Oh, sure. You ought to know well enough by this time that nothing happens in this town that gets by these old ears. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you can tell me who tried to powder me with lead the minute I got off the plane. Somebody took a pot shot at you? Six of them. I know every hatchet man in town. They must have figured you were after something pretty big to pull a cutie like that, Steve. <laughs> no, just routine stuff. Certainly nothing worth six slugs. Maybe. Well, what's your business is your business. Still, I can't figure out how come they missed you. Lousy shooting. That's just it. These thugs don't shoot lousy. Not if they want to live very long. No, Steve. They missed you deliberately. You mean it was a sort of a polite invitation to scram out of town? Eh? Sure. Looks like that to me. <laughs> Hi there, Mr. Beiser. Good afternoon, Mamie. What'll it be? The usual? Uh, yes. Oh, Mr. Beiser, shake hands with an old friend of mine just in from the States, Steve Mitchell. Mr. Beiser? I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Mitchell. I hope you're enjoying your stay here, Mr. Mitchell. Singapore can be very exciting if you let it. I'm beginning to find that out. I'll uh, take that to a table if you don't mind, maybe. Oh, all right. Help yourself. I uh, hope I see you again. Uh... Mm. One of my oldest customers. He always hangs out here whenever he's in town. Big rubber exporter up Peninsula Way. That's so? Oh, excuse me, will you, Steve? Somebody wants me in the office. Hey, man. No! mission to Singapore comes under the heading of I don't like it. Apparently everybody in town knows I'm here except the gal I came to meet. At least nobody around seems to fill the bill, but you never know. The come on is the queen of hearts, so I do the obvious and lay out a hand to solitaire, making sure that the scarlet lady is in full view. By kibitz? <laughs> oh, go right ahead. I always did say it was more fun playing solitaire when you weren't alone. Thanks. You're an American. I could tell the minute you walked in. So am I. Oh, yeah, I thought you were. How long have you been away from the States? Oh, too long. That's why I came over. I got lonesome. Not many Americans come to this spot. Yeah, only crazy ones like me. You know, you don't look like you go with the wallpaper in this rat pit either. Where else would they hire a dancer with two left feet? <laughs> Looks like I need help, huh? What's the matter with the Red Queen? Yeah, I think 
guess it is her next move. You're Steve Mitchell. You're interested in rubber? Yeah. You know where I can get it? The hall through the portiers, the first door on the left, is my room. Got it. Meet me there tonight at 7.30. What's the matter with right now? It wouldn't look good. Besides, I won't have all the information until then. Okay. Okay, Yank. Thanks for lending me horn in on your game. All right. See you again sometime. Sure. a stranger in Singapore. I used to think I was. Mind if I sit down? I'll help yourself. Thanks. Well, you said help myself. You don't think much of me, do you? I don't think of you at all. Well, as a matter of fact, I am sort of a reprehensible sort of a guy, in a way. But, uh, I have my values, Mr. Mitchell. Oh, you know my name's Mitchell, too, huh? Well, it's up to me to know things. Plenty of things. For instance, uh, I uh, also know how to do card tricks. Here, I'll, uh, I'll show you one. What'd you get? Five of spades. Put it on the left. Now then, what'd you say that card was? Five of spades. Are you sure? Because, uh, I think it was the queen of hearts. Well, what do you know? Interesting. Very. You know any more tricks with the Queen of Hearts? Sure. One in particular, I'm sure, would intrigue you. But, uh... Yeah, I know. What'll it cost you? Well, it might be a little dangerous. Would a hundred dollars be too much? I wouldn't pay a hundred dollars to communicate with Houdini. Oh, well. All right. But cash on delivery. Well, uh, this is hardly the place to, uh... Do the performance. We'll have to take a little walk. Where to? Oh, it's all right, Mr. Mitchell. You can trust me. I'm always loyal to my employers. Let's go. Yeah. Wonderful, isn't it, Mr. Mitchell, what you can do with a... Can I, these days? Yeah, up to and including slipping it between somebody's ribs. <laughs> I'm not responsible for anybody in here. You mean this week? I see. Who have we here? Never saw him before in my life. How about this one? <clears throat> Who's she? That, Mr. Mitchell is the lady you came to Singapore to find. You mean she's... Exactly. The real Red Queen. Are you sure of this? Absolutely. Hey, this thing gets screwier and screwier. If that dame's the Red Queen, then who's the dame at Mamie Wong's and what's she trying to sell? On the other hand, how do I know you're on the level? How do I know that's the real Red Queen? Well, as Confucius would say... Never mind Confucius. What do you say? <laughs> well, uh, I'm afraid you'll just have to take my word for that, Mr. Mitchell. All Richard. right. What else do you know about this? Hmm. I'm afraid there's a little uh, matter of business ethics uh, before I tell you, sir. Okay. 
There you are. Go ahead. Spill. Well, the lady was very interested in stolen rubber. I know all that. What else? The lady was also very friendly with a certain Mr. Rudolph Pricer. The guy I met in the bar? Precisely. And as you know, his business is exporting rubber. Stolen rubber or otherwise? Just rubber. How's everything going? Very well, Mimi. As a matter of fact, I think everything's going to be all right. Excuse me, Mr. Bassett. Yes? Could I speak to you a minute privately? Why? Well, it may be to your advantage. It concerns a certain dead queen. Oh, what's this about a red queen? Of course, you understand. If the information is acceptable. Yes, I know there'll be a slight fee. Get on with it. Well, uh, a short while ago, by a strange coincidence, I visited the district mall to uh, see a sick friend. So you're the Red Queen, huh? Don't call me that. It's dangerous. All right. I'll call you Red for short. How's that? I believe you're here on business. That's right. Who stole that shipment of crude rubber and where is it? Well, it's gone. What? I'm afraid you got here too late. Too late? They moved it out last night. Who's they? I don't know. One of them wouldn't be a fellow of the name of Bicer, would it? How did you know? Well, like Max, I make it my business to know a lot of things. For example, I know you're not the Red Queen. I'm going to believe you, Max, because I can't afford not to. But if you're wrong about this... Mr. Bicer, you don't think I'd double-cross a friend, do you? Quite frankly, yes. That's all there is to it. Stranded, working in this hole, trying to save enough money to get home. You can't blame me for listening to a proposition that might help me along. So Beisler offered to pay your passage home if you'd take the place of the Red Queen and, and get me off the track by giving me a lot of phony information? You, you can't blame me. Then you don't know anything about this shipment of crude rubber. Only what they told me to tell you.
Good evening, Mr. Mitchell. You look a little haggard. Had a bad night? For your information, I had a whopping bad night. You know what that is? That's very interesting. Looks like a guru blow dart. Where'd you find it? In the back of my neck. You obviously have enemies in Singapore. I hope you know who they are. I think I do. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Mitchell. You're only stunned. That thing could have killed you. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, Mamie. Good night, Mr. Barsley. Jumping Buddha, Steve, what's happened to you? You look as if you'd seen a ghost. Tell the truth, Mamie, I almost was one. You better let me mix you something. I think you need one. <laughs> Maybe you got something there. So, you got yourself pinked by a blowgun. Ha! By right, you ought to be dead. <laughs> yeah, I think they only put enough junk on the thing to make me take a short nap. Another reminder that I'm not welcome. Mamie. That little weasel that calls himself Max, has he been around here? Earlier tonight. Why? I want to see him. Was he talking to Beiser? Who knows? I only keep my eye on him when he gets near the cash register. Look, Steve, I don't know what you're after that they've got, but if I've ever seen a guy building his own coffin, you're it. Oh, maybe. At least they've been polite enough to give me a couple of warnings. That's just it. The next time it'll be for keeps. Oh, lay off, honey. You're too nice a guy to see splattered up against a stone wall somewhere. <laughs> right now, what I need the most is some sleep. You got a spare room, Amy? Sure. Always got a room for you, Steve. Here. Room 201, upstairs. Thanks. Good night, Steve. Sleep tight. And don't worry. I go up to hit the sack, but I can't make it. I'm not sleepy. So far, all I've wound up with on this deal is a double cross, first by Lana and then Max. At this point, Bicer is my top boy on the suspect list, and he's got all the qualifications. He deals in rubber, he knew the Red Queen, and he seems to have a little habit of being around most of the time, which raises a little question in my mind. Is he staying close to me, or have I stumbled onto his headquarters? Maybe now's a good time to take a look around while it's nice and quiet. Yeah. I decide to do it, but I don't get very far. Who is it? Lana. What? I know it's late, but I have to talk to you. <laughs> What's the general topic of conversation? You. What about me? Steve, I want to help you. <laughs> thanks, but no thanks. What do you mean? Look, first time you tried to help me, I wound up with a blowgun dart in the back of my neck, you remember? No, I'm sorry, I can't use your kind of help. Any more of that, it'd kill me. Steve, you've got to believe me. Everything I told you was the truth. I had nothing to do with the attempt on your life. Yeah. Sure looked like a setup to me. I tell you, it wasn't. Look, all I want to do is get back to the States. Is there anything the matter with that? Well, it depends on how you go about earning a ticket. Would it be worth a ticket to you to know the location of that rubber? Is this another one of your routines, Lana? Would I risk a blowgun dart over a routine? Well, I guess you got a point there. All right, let's have it. Who is it? Mamie. I'll see you later. Stevie? Bum guess, Mamie. Looks like I'm holding open house tonight. What's on your mind? You. Oh, looks like I'm busting out all over with popularity, too. No, Stevie. You're not. That's the point. Oh? The word's gone out about you. What word? You guess. Oh, I'm due for a trip to the morgue, huh? One way. They missed you twice. This time, they won't. Where's the word come from, Mamie? If 
Who knows, but it's here. Stevie, I'm trying to do you a favor. Either clear out or get some help. Think it over. Well, that's the least I can do, Mamie. Thanks for warning me. Sure. Be smart, Steve. Good night. Good night. Well, nothing like a friendly little word of cheer to top off the day. Mamie's only trying to do me a favor, but I'm in the deal too far to back out now. I wait a few minutes for Mamie to get back to her room, and then I head for Lana's to find out what she was about to tell me. Are you looking for someone, Max? Yeah, I, I was on my way up to your room. What for? Slip that knife of yours between my ribs? Oh, you know I wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Mitchell. Sure, I know it, but do you? What were you going to tell me? Is that a nice me? way to talk to a friend? Sure, what were you going to tell me? Well, uh, not so loud, will you? Were you going to tell me that you'd sold me out to Bicer? Shh, you'll get us both killed. What did you tell Bicer? Oh, I, I didn't tell him nothing. Look, I know you talked to Bicer. No, I didn't really. Look, well, I found one of your half-chewed toothpicks in his ashtray. Oh, all right. Uh, I told him you knew about the Red Queen, but that's all. That's all? That's yeah. enough. You don't realize that. Well, I, I knew I made a mistake, so I came back to straighten it out. It was on my conscience. I ache inside when, whenever I don't tell the truth. Oh, brother. <laughs> Look, honest, I came back to warn you. They, they're planning on killing you. I think I know who they are, but I want to hear you say it. It's Spicer. Where is he? Back there. Hmm? Yeah, Spicer owns this building. The lovers back there. They're planning on taking it out tonight. Brother, I gotta get to a phone. I think I'll need help on this. No, I've waited as long as I can. I'm gonna ship it right away. But first, I'm gonna take care of Steve Mitchell. Okay, Bison. Mitchell. Yeah. He almost got away with it, Bison. Drop it, Stevie. Huh? I said drop it, Stevie. Mammy. Oh, no. Don't tell me that you're in back of this racket. I did everything I could to warn her to make you lay off. Yeah. I guess if I had used my head and added a few things up, I'd have figured you. But your friend Bicer here kept stealing the show. Oh, well, anyway, Mamie. I'll be getting it from a friend, not from some stranger. Or a loo. Uh-oh. So I get the needle treatment, huh? What's the matter with a gun? Too messy, maybe? Guns make noise, Stevie boy. Do it, Stevie boy. I just can't do it. Mamie, you know what I've got to do. Stevie, it's been a long time. Just one favor. I'll try. Give Lana a break. She had no choice but to do what she did. Give her a break. Will you, Steve? Well, when you give your testimony, you say that. I'll say it, too. I knew I could depend on you. Oh, I'm tired. I guess I'm going to have a nice, long rest. For free. <laughs> <laughs> 